on this aviation special, we have a chat with Steve Stavar from West Virginia University about how they deployed their digital signage network, what not to do in rolling out a digital signage network for higher ed, and DSD 2019. All that and more next on this AV Nation special. The network for the AV industry. What are you listening to? This. This is AV. This. This. This is AV Nation. This is AV Nation. This is an AV Nation special, the hub of digital signage. It's Tom O'Brien with AV Nation with a DSE special. What we're doing is we are previewing Digital Signage Expo 2019 comes your way March 26th through the 29th uh, from Las Vegas with me uh, today to talk about his involvement in DSD and also uh, the uh, deployment of digital signage at, uh, at West Virginia U University. His name is Steve Stavar, but he goes by Chewy. Hello, sir. How are you, Tim? I'm doing good. Real quick question. Why Chewy? Uh, first year of college, uh, I was the big, tall, hairy guy. So uh, it's kind of stuck. I've had the sideburns, um, kind of hard to miss. And um, it's affectionately Chewbacca, Chewy. Yeah, yeah I, I, I get a big fan of that then. Um, you've been around uh, West Virginia for, for a long, long time. Kind of talk about your transition. You, you came from video, uh, which you and I have mm -hmm. a lot of similarities there. How did you get from doing video production uh, and, and getting involved in the digital signage deployment at, at West Virginia? Uh, so when digital signage started here uh, at WVU, it was uh, attached to the video team. Uh, kind of helped out with that. I was pretty young. Um, and uh, I, was, I applied for a position with digital signage uh, to do exclusively digital signage and didn't get it. And a couple of years later, the opportunity arose again. And uh, I applied and, and got the job. Um, digital science is kind of a weird animal where you have to have IT background. Um, I think the people that come from video production, uh, they really care about the, the output and what's on the screen. Um, you can learn the hardware, you can learn the IT, but, but understanding um, dark backgrounds with light text um, is, is a huge thing that I see in, in bezel management. Um, so I think video production, people that come from that side really uh, excel in the digital signage market. We'll talk about that for a second. You, you, you said that, that folks that, that, that come from video background, can, you know, you guys care about the, the interface, really the experience of folks consuming the digital signage content. How does that play out on a, on a campus like, like West Virginia when you've got several different, you know, you know several different um, colleges or several different um, departments that each one, you know, kind of, they worry about what, what, they, what message they're trying to send out, whether that's business or medical, um, or what have you. Sure. So uh, we've kind of built a homebrew. Uh, we're our third content management system in, I guess this is the 10th or 11th year of digital science at WVU. Um, we have uh, 125 uh, or so screens deployed on campus, and the majority of them are all one-to-one. -one. So there's one PC behind each screen. Um, we're very close to deploying what we're calling an app um, that has interactivity. Um, but what we've built is, so the School of Medicine can put messaging just on the School of Medicine screens. Um, so we really get the buy-in from the schools and colleges. Uh, a lot of the installs that we have here were put in by those schools and colleges. They paid for the hardware, they paid for the power and data to get pulled. Uh, so they're invested. Yeah. So allowing them to be able to put content in, um, you know, at free will, they all have communicators. So those people are uh, knowing what's going on in the schools and colleges and those departments. Uh, we let them put stuff on those screens. Um, we kind of look at them and make sure the graphics don't sell advertising, stuff like that. Um, don't have logos from outside entities. Um, but pretty much they're on their own. Now, if there's something they want to deploy campus-wide, it, it goes through a couple of people um, to make sure it's completely in brand with the university so everything looks the same. Um, the kind of unique thing we have about the system is um, when they're putting in content in the web forums, all they're concerned about is, is the text. So they're concerned about a title and a description. And then through our content management system, we take care of all the pretty on the back end of making sure it's in the right font, the right colors. Um, so really anybody can put content in uh, at will uh, on, on their screens. 
Very cool. Well, let's talk about a little bit about Digital Signage Expo. We, we, we say DSE is happening the 26th to the 29th of March. The, the, the show floor itself uh, is actually open the 27th and 28th. There's, there's more education actually on both sides of, of those dates. From from your standpoint, or or you know West Virginia uh, University standpoint, why do you feel that DSC is is an important show to go to? From a, you know, not just somebody who's, who manages a, a digital signage network, but maybe somebody who's looking to get into this or, or expand their knowledge of, of digital signage as an industry. Sure, I, I think uh, the first year that I went to DSC, I uh, was uh, kind of blown away. Uh, there's. Uh, <laughs> A ton of content management solutions. There's a ton of hardware manufacturers out there um, and unique solutions. Um, so you're going to see it all there, and, and it's really boiled down to just digital signage. Uh, I think if you go to other conferences that have uh, digital signage as a part of it, um, or the hardware manufacturers are part of it, but they're not really there to talk about digital signage. And all the vendors there at, at DSC are tuned in to digital signage, and, and that's what they're there for. And they know that the people there are, are there talking about digital signage. And I think it's kind of interesting talking to vendors through the years. I think that um, they see that the, the people that are attending are more focused on digital signage and are asking better questions and more in-depth questions. And I think for the industry, that's, that's great. Mm, very cool. Uh, well, let's talk about, about, about your session. Your session is, is happening Wednesday, March 27th uh, from 9 until 10. Uh, it, it's, it caught me. It's called What Not to Do, Lessons Learned from West Virginia University's Digital Signage Network. Uh, it sounds like you're coming from a standpoint of somebody who's been there, done that, and you have the scars. So let's talk about that for a second. When, when you start deploying and start getting into this, what are some of the hurdles uh, and honestly some of the hazards that you would counsel someone who's just maybe getting into this, uh, just stepping into it, either from a, an initial rollout, like their campus has never done it before, or they're, they're just now getting into it? Sure. So, um, you know, like I said, we've been around uh, 10 or 11 years, and, um, you know, there's, there's pain points. There's things we've learned. Like I said, we were on our third content management solution. Um, there's reasons for that. Um, and, and I think a, a lot of the issue uh, stems from the reason we went from our first to our second was when we went in, we didn't really know what content we had and what content we wanted to push and how we wanted to push it. Um, and it's, it's very heady um, to think about and it's, it's not a physical thing. Um, so coming in with a plan, I think the first year at DSC really, in the first year or two that I was doing digital signage full time, it, it was really thinking about, oh, I have this pre-existing content. How can I get that pre-existing content on these screens? without you know doing a ton of work um so you can go to dsc and you can see all this hardware and go oh i want to buy these screens because they're flashy or they're whatever but then i put the screens up and, and i first that baby now i have to feed it with content and you have to feed it with content 24 7. and the problem at higher ed um and, and a couple other places too obviously is you know our customers don't change every day so I can't put on a sign and buy more potato chips and see the sales of potato chips rise. Uh, so you have to keep it updated. It has to be new and fresh. So it's the same messaging for a week and a half. What's going to cause students and faculty and staff to look at those screens to get information when you finally put something in that pertains to them. Um, so it's, it's really finding out what works best for you. And there is, you know, I'll say this a hundred times, I'll say this for 10 years uh, in the future. There is no silver bullet. There's, if, if there was, there, there wouldn't be conferences uh, around digital signage uh, because we wouldn't have to go and learn and share our ideas and, and share, you know, our pain points. Um, and there's things you never think about of, is my signage ADA compliant? Um, and it's kind of funny is, you know, and, and there's different ADA compliances if it's front of house or back of house. So there's a lot of nuances that people don't think about um, until, you know, you, you get served with, uh, hey, this is an ADA compliant and you have to try to fix it. So we're really kind of hyper-focused on making sure it's right the first time and putting all the effort in initially than, than doing it over and over and over again. You, you mentioned making sure that you have consistent content. A friend of mine who's, in, who's you know, uh, heavily involved in digital signage from a, a content creation standpoint uh, refers to that as, as feeding the beast, right? Um, Absolutely. What are some, some best practices you guys have found? You, you said that there's not a silver bullet and there's not, but what are some best practices you, you've found to not only get you, know, you and, and you know your cohorts, but also the folks that are involved 
in the individual, uh, you know, in, in the in individual schools or in, in the individual departments to help you, you know, feed that beast? Yeah, so, I mean, we at one time looked at all the web pages that WVU has, and all of these schools and departments have all this content, and they have stories they want to tell. And, you know, from the university standpoint, they can't tell them all um, in a magazine or, or globally on the main page. But uh, your engineering school might have a great story that really pertains to engineering students. So they've put that on their web page. Well, it only lives on their web page. So how do you get at least the headline, the picture, the publication date automatically onto your screen? So now they've, they've done the work once but you're feeding it to multiple locations. Then how do you work that in with Twitter and Facebook and other social medias and Instagram? And how do you, they're already doing that work for those. How do you suck that into your deployments so they only have to do the work once? Um, it's interesting here, a lot of people on their web pages will hard code an event. Well, that event changes. Now they gotta go to that web page and change it, but they've also put on the university calendar. And, and teaching them that there's tools existing in the university that if you put on this calendar, specific calendar, it automatically feeds to these six places. So if you spelled something wrong, you change it in one location, it changes all six places instead of, oh, I forgot it was on this back page and my web page. So a lot of it too is, is bringing everybody together. Um, a kind of thing I came up with uh, a couple of year, uh, a couple months ago was you know, digital science kind of ends up being the hub of the wheel. So you have all these video people and the web people and the print people, and they have all this great stuff. How do you bring that all together? And you know, content management solutions, they're not really managing your content as much as they're an aggregator. They're bringing that all together and then displaying that in the unified front on the screens that you've put in. Um, and I, I think if people really start thinking about that, of, and that's not just in higher education, that's hospitality. You know, uh, a casino has little sub-departments everywhere. And once you start getting those sub-departments talking together, holistically, your message becomes better. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, real quick before we, we get, kind of let you go here. Um, when you go to, to DSC, what do you go for uh, now that you got you? Because I mean, you guys have obviously, you, you've had your, your system up and running for, for several years. Uh, you've been involved in several years. And you're, you're doing a presentation. When you land in Vegas, what, what are one or two things that, that you want to see? Uh, or does it, does it vary on year to year? Uh, it does vary year to year on, on what we're kind of doing. I mean, like you said, we're pretty ingrained in what we do. We've uh, it's pretty much standardized what we do. We have a couple of flavors of screens we offer um, the clients, you know, internal sales, basically. Um, I, I love going and partnering and, and seeing people that I've talked to in the year before and they had an issue and we've talked about it and see where they're at. Um, it's always interesting to see what other industries are doing um, and how those industries can get sucked into to my world. Again, we're not selling potato chips, but how are those people that are selling potato chips? What are they using and how are they doing it? Um, and it's kind of interesting because the different verticals, um, you know, some of them keep those secrets really close to their chest and others like education are all about, here's a packet of what we do. Take it, take it back. If you have questions, call us, we'll help you with it. Um, but it's, it's really cool when the streams cross kind of, um, to, to find that information. Um, Hardware wise, things are going to change. There's going to be uh, new things. People want to do playerless players. Uh, there's some limitations there, but it's always interesting to see incrementally how those changes go. And are we going to be able to put screens on the wall without PCs behind them that have full interactivity uh, in two years, five years, 10 years? Um, and what's that really going to do to the space? So um, there are incremental changes hardware wise, um, but I think the best thing. For anybody going to DSE, newbie, or you've been in it for 20 years, is go in with a plan. Go in with a top five, a top 10, the things you want to see, and then, but always leave one or two open because you're going to see something that wows you. And it might be very in its different stages, but in three years, it could be the new big thing and you missed it because you weren't at DSE. And now you're playing catch up. So um, I, I think it's, it's prudent to go every year if you can. Um, and, and the, the camaraderie that you find with people that are like, you know, you're, you're on an island. I mean, there, there's two people that do digital science at WVU. But when we get there, we talk to all these people on the same island. And we're like, oh, we're not in this alone. Like, there's other people having these same issues. And how do we get to overcome these issues? 
you know, the ability to kind of commiserate and, and honestly to, to be among, you know, cohorts that, that do live this every day and, and can share your, your pain and also, you know, offer you suggestions because they may have been there already. So, all right, sir. Sure. Uh, again, your, your presentation is March 27th. It's the Wednesday of, of the event from nine to 10. It's called what not to do lessons learned from West Virginia university's digital science network. Uh, Steve Estevar Chewy, I, I appreciate your time this morning. Uh, if somebody wants to get a hold of you or uh, find out more about West Virginia University, how do they do that? Sure, uh, they can go to infostations.wvu.edu, I-N-F-O-S-T-A-T-I-O-N-S.wvu.edu, um, and that has a lot of information on it, um, or uh, you know, send me an email. It's steve.stavar, S-T-E-V-E dot S-T-A-V-A-R at mail, M-A-I-L dot W-V-U dot E-D-U. All right, very good. Steve Stavar, Chewy from uh, West Virginia University. You can see him at Digital Signage Expo. Again, that happens March 26th through the 29th, 2019 in Las Vegas. Uh, for us, for AV Nation, you can follow us at avnation.tv. avnation.tv, follow along as we also head to DSE 2019. We'll bring you... Uh, more interviews like this and also uh, interviews from the show floor. So all that and more at avnation.tv. It's avnation.tv. 